Hi, I'm Patrick Mannion, Editor-in-Chief of Tech Online, and I'm here in sunny Orlando at the Freescale Technology Forum to, get to catch up on, on, on what's happening with Freescale over the past couple of months and see where it's headed. Joining me today is Rich Byers, CEO and Chairman of Freescale, to give us a heads up on what's happening and what's going to happen at the keynote tomorrow. Hi Rich, how are you doing? Thanks for joining me. Appreciate Good morning. It. Pleasure to meet you. So, there's been quite a lot of speculation about Freescale and where it's going. Um, can you give us a quick heads up and tell us how you plan, in some cases, to fix Freescale? And, and bring it forward um, into the next generation of technology development and business directions. Sure. Well, I, I think Freescale is a very solid company. We obviously have a heritage of uh, innovation. We've been at the forefront of uh, many different things that have changed the world, not just some but changed the world, cellular networking, automotive. And I believe that much of that strength continues to, uh, to uh, exist within our company. Having said that, clearly we, we have had a series of challenges over right. the last several years. Um, as part of Motorola, we of course are uh, uh, very tightly woven into some of the things that Motorola and their system businesses do. And as we all know, that we've had, um, we together have shared the pain with Motorola uh, as uh, some of their cellular business has, uh, has seen uh, right. significant share erosion. And so that's been clearly on the minds of many people inside sure. the company and outside the company. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't detract from the fact that the company really maintains a leadership position in a number of different areas. The automotive space, the networking space, uh, despite the fact that uh, we've uh, struggled in the, in the cellular arena, we continue to have uh, very, very strong capabilities in that regard. And in some of the other tangential areas that surround our microprocessor and uh, microcontroller and DSP business, we've got strengths in analog and power management, right. RF, and sensor technology. So we think, uh, and I certainly feel, that we continue to have very, very um, significant uh, strengths uh, from a product standpoint, from a leadership position in some of the very exciting markets. Networking and automotive, for example, are uh, projected to be two of the markets that are going to grow for semiconductor companies at an even faster rate than the overall market. Right, and that's right. a very, yeah. very positive uh, phenomenon for, uh, for us as a company. And then for finally, uh, a final comment, uh, we have tremendous relationships with customers. Many of the largest customers in the world have done business with us for more than 25 years. That clearly right. says that, that they trust us, that they're confident in our capabilities, they're confident in our uh, a willingness to work with them, and uh, and I've had the opportunity to meet with uh, quite a number of customers since I've joined the company, and and all of them reaffirm that they really do uh, appreciate what we what we have done and what we do for them, and uh, want to be partners with us going forward. Recently, um, Freescale spun out the MRAM business. Yes. Um, is that some might speculate that that's a, pre a precursor to possibly spinning out other divisions of Freescale. Is there any plan to that? I don't think there's a correlation. Uh, the, the, the MRAM business is a very small technology that we invested mm -hmm. in. Right. We find that it's an interesting technology. We believe that it has uh, applicability across a pretty broad range of areas. But as an entity that's only going to serve the needs of, of Freescale's markets, we felt that that technology was not going to proliferate as rapidly as uh, we would like to see. So we, we thought about it. We want this technology. We clearly believe that it's, a, it's an important technology for us. But we felt that this is a technology that if it operates on its own and can go quite independently to other type of customers in other market segments, that it's more likely to get traction faster. And so right. we retain an ownership interest in it. Venture capitalists have put in uh, an uh, investment in it. So we think this is just a case of technology that we've developed that would be better exploited uh, if it's going after a broader market than right. within Freescale. Just a quick aside, um, whatever happened to the packaging technology that Freescale announced there a couple of years back? Well, uh, RCP technology right, is a yeah. technology that we absolutely yeah, are continuing developing to developing right. and uh, uh, we're seeing the first uh, fruits of, of that in products that will be coming out late this year. Okay. So that's a technology we're developing and we're, and we're very excited. We think right. it will give us an advantage. Okay. Um, you mentioned networking and automotive as being two hot areas for you. Um, what's driving the growth in networking for you? Well, in, in networking, I think it really is this whole issue of, uh, of insatiable demand for bandwidth. Uh, as, we, as we've seen probably over the last two years, uh, this phenomenon of voice traffic being enhanced and uh, expanded with data traffic 
with a discussion of video, and I'd say for many years we've talked about video as an important application um, uh, over the, uh, the worldwide networks, but the fact of the matter is only over the last couple of years has it become really, really significant. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing the whole social interaction. Um, YouTube is simply an unbelievable example of a technology that I don't think many of us dreamed of as much as right. five years ago, and now it is so commonly used. It's not only used for kids enjoying watching what are silly uh, videos of friends and what have you, but it's becoming a, a, a business tool right, that right. virtually all companies are starting to use effectively. So I think it's it's this it's this richness of um, uh, of applications that are absolutely driving the networking market and uh, no signs of slowdown whatsoever. So what does Freescale bring to that market that nobody else has? What? How do you plan to differentiate yourselves? Well, I, uh, this is one of the things that I'm very excited about. The fact of the matter is the networking market uh, is a major user of embedded processing. Right. And Freescale is absolutely the world's leader in embedded processing. It's one of the things that, it, that truly excites me about the opportunities going forward. It's on the we, PowerPC architecture. PowerPC major, architecture. Right? Yeah. Um, so we're, we're a major player in microprocessors, right. major player in microcontrollers, and a significant player in digital signal processing. And so we have the capabilities to offer um, numerous markets, and more specifically, the networking market, the, the type of capabilities that they need. Also, it's, it's very true that, that customers in this space tend to see uh, product cycles in right. very long terms. Right. Five years, 10 years, as we know from years ago, the telephone companies often put in systems for 20 or 30 years. So the architecture uh, that is designed into networking products and networking systems is often the architecture that customers want to stay with and want to build on and so forth. We have a true, a proven record of of doing just that, constantly enhancing the capabilities of our of our family of products, constantly um, uh, bringing forward the software that not only that we've developed, that our customers have developed. And that is, the, I think, among the reasons why we're number one in embedded processors in the network arena. And I think we can continue to take advantage of this price and growth. In the in 2001, 2002 timeframe, there was a huge overcapacity in terms of the fiber network, right? I mean, we, we overbuilt out, or we overbuilt capacity in the 90s, et cetera. And we had a lot of dark fiber for a number of years, and now that's been lit up again, right, over the mm -hmm. last two or three years, thanks to YouTube, thanks to Video On Demand, thanks to those applications. Right. Is there any um, like an area in which that's happening faster, and is it, is it a slow ramp versus a huge rapid build out in the 90s that you're seeing? Well, I think, um, I, I think each of the uh, service providers uh, uh, basically um, invested at a different pace back in the late 90s right. and, and 2000s, and so, so they came out of that problem of overcapacity at different rates. And right. I think they will continue to come out of that. So I believe this is not going to be a rocket ship um, uh, a change in the marketplace. I think more, it's more, a more slow, pointed, steady right. yeah. uh, uh, development in the market, which by the way, I believe is in our, our best interest, sure. it's the market's best interest. These massive increases in, in capacity only to find out that this is way over, exceeded right. the, the end user demands. It's not good for service providers, the equipment providers, nor semiconductor companies. So I think this very steady, healthy growth in demand is um, is a good thing for all of us in this uh, value chain. And, and, and so I think for, for Freescale, it means steady, solid uh, growth in, in that business over time. Is it in a metro area or is it in a backbone network that you're finding most, uh, most demand currently for your systems? We, well, we, we, we operate in, uh, uh, largely in the backbone and, right. and move out towards the, uh, uh, the edge. Uh, towards the edge. Right. Um, uh, and so the, the bulk of our strength is, is in the backbone uh, as well as in the enterprise, right. where we have solutions that, that are used in the, uh, in the network, in the enterprise. So both of those are seeing um, positive signs of uh, momentum. Okay.